Hi friends, I asked my viewers if they wanted to see an extreme budget challenge to feed a family dinners for a week for either $10 or $15 and most votes were for $15 so that's what I'm going to be doing today and I'll be doing most of my shopping at Walmart. For today's menu, I'm going to be leaning into a couple of ingredients, the first being eggs. Prices are back down now so they're a cheap source of protein and I'll also be using flour. I do count flour as a pantry staple, however, I'll be using a large quantity of it this week, so I'm going to go ahead and buy a small bag for $1.38, and there are so many things I can do with that one bag of flour. And then I'm also going to buy a 5 pound bag of potatoes, and I have to say, these are beautiful looking potatoes. I can usually get these much cheaper elsewhere, but I'm going to go ahead and buy them here since they are an integral part of my menu and I do think that most people have a Walmart near them. If you only have $10 to spend, I would buy these three ingredients and then purchase either some canned or frozen vegetables. Here are just a few of the recipes that you can make with just these three ingredients as long as you have the basic pantry staples like baking soda, sugar, salt, bouillon, etc. Which I of course will be using in today's video. I could have picked up twice as many potatoes at another market, which would have been a game changer for feeding a family. So if you do this menu, try to shop the sales and also Aldi if you have one near you. I was pleasantly surprised to find ears of corn for 33 cents. If I cut these in half, I could get two of these and we could have the mini cobs for one of our dinners. And I tried to find the largest ones. I decided that since I did a vegetarian plan last time, that this week I would try to add a little meat. I'm thinking about making some biscuits and serving them open face with some mashed potatoes and gravy. So I thought I would get some beef, but obviously you could also get turkey if you would rather, or just skip this step altogether and use the 80 cents towards a vegetable. And I don't eat this stuff, so I'm not really sure what the difference between this corned beef or beef would be, but I think I'm just gonna go with the regular beef. I'll also grab the great value version of Spam, which is just called Lunch and Meat. This is gonna give us a lot of flavor to at least a couple of our meals. And I'll also pick up this can of chicken. I consider purchasing just one chicken breast, but in my area, the best I could find at the deli was $3.99 a pound, which just isn't gonna cut it for the budget. But if it's on sale, that might be a better option for you. You'll get a lot more chicken in one chicken breast than in this small can. I'm getting this tomato sauce, which could be used several ways. First of all, it would be excellent in a soup, but I'm thinking about making a pasta frittata and making a spicy marinara sauce to pour over the top. I wanted some kind of greens, and they were supposed to have bunches of kale for $1.48 each, but they were sold out. And I had spinach last week, and besides, I already have my heart set on kale, so I'm just gonna pick that up at the other market on my way home. I recently noticed they started selling individual heads of romaine. Well, now they're selling two two sticks of butter also, which is the first time I've seen this. I already have butter in my stash at home and I will be using it today, but it is optional. I stopped by my favorite produce market on the way home to pick up some carrots because Walmart doesn't sell loose carrots and I really only need one. I'm also gonna grab a small brown onion because they always have them on sale. I tried to find the smallest one I could because I don't need a lot. I'm just going to be using it as a flavor enhancer. They only had organic kale in, which was a little bit more expensive. But like I said, I'm in the mood for kale, so I'm going to get it. But I noticed they had three varieties all for the same price. And I do love this Italian kale, but it's a much smaller quantity. And I haven't had the purple kale for a while, but it also looks like it's a little bit smaller. I think the biggest one is going to be just the regular greens kind. So that's what I'm going to go with. Obviously, if you get your kale cheaper, then you can also have a bonus of being able to add an extra vegetable into the grocery haul. 
I spent a total of $15.09. The only thing that you haven't already seen was the tomato and the evaporated milk, which I already had in my pantry. But the current cost of that item has been added on. And also I have a lemon here, but just ignore that because I didn't end up using it and I subtracted it from the total. There are so many things you can do with flour. It really is like the magical ingredient in budget cooking. And it's the single most important ingredient to stave off hunger. You can make bread, tortillas, pierogies, empanadas, dumplings, arepes, so, so many things you can make with it. And I'll show some of those that I've made in the past at the end of this video. But for this menu, I'm gonna be relying heavily on biscuits. Usually when I'm planning for families, I like to keep the cooking time as low as possible. And I think that's what we can accomplish with biscuits. I bought a two pound bag of flour and with my recipe for biscuits, you could make three batches and still have a cup and a half of flour left over for making gravy and for rolling out your biscuits. And obviously if you already have some flour at home, you could use that to make even more. All the recipes will be in the description area of my video. I'm using butter this time in my biscuits, but I've used oil before when I didn't have butter and that works too. This recipe calls for buttermilk, but I always substitute with water and it turns out just fine. I think if anything, these changes would have affected the rise of the biscuits. And this time I thought I would add a small amount of vinegar to the water just to try to replicate the buttermilk and see how that works. Biscuits are such a beloved food here in the US. I think there are a few recipes more highly debated. Maybe chili comes close. It's so funny. One of my viewers was telling me the other day that in Texas, they don't consider it chili if it has beans in it. And I guess salsa might be heavily debated also, but still I think maybe biscuits might be the most heavily debated. Everyone has an opinion on how to make the best biscuits and exactly what temperature they should be cooked at. I myself don't make biscuits very often, but when I do, they always turn out delicious. I try to handle my biscuits as little as possible. So I need it just enough to get all of the ingredients combined and get it into a form that I can roll out. They say if you handle it less, you'll have more tender biscuits. After last week's video, some of you may be wondering if this was my grandma's recipe and it's not. I wish it was. I had some things that were stolen in a move once and my recipe book was in there. This is just a recipe I found on all recipes for Kentucky biscuits. And some of the reviewers said it tasted like KFC biscuits. And after making it, I have to agree. I like this biscuit recipe. You can make these round, but you can also put these in a pan and then just cut them into squares. And some people like to do drop biscuits also, but I prefer to do rounds. I suggest making a batch of 12 regular size biscuits and then a batch of eight large or grand size biscuits. That'll work best with the menu that I have planned, but you'll see what I mean later when you see the meals. The last time I made these, some of my viewers recommended resisting the urge to twist when you push down on the biscuit. And I can't tell you how hard it is to not twist, but apparently it helps them to rise better when cooking. People that make these on a regular basis can make such beautiful biscuits that turn out uniform every time. I don't expect that mine will be beautiful, but I do think they'll taste great. And I ended up getting 14 biscuits, which means mine are probably a little thinner than they should have been. I had this extra dough, so I thought I would make a little cinnamon roll bite. The only difference between cinnamon rolls and biscuits are cinnamon rolls have yeast, which helps them to rise and be lighter and fluffier. And then I'll just add a little bit of butter. And I picked up this cinnamon sugar mix from Dollar Tree that I've been wanting to use. So I'll just sprinkle that on there and then roll this up and then see how it tastes when it's done. Thank you. 
For my first meal, I thought I would make some beef gravy, but this method works for vegetarian or chicken gravy also. And I start by making a roux with a little bit of oil and flour, and really this just works by feel. So once you've learned how to make gravy, you know how to make it every time, and you just realize that if you're going to make a bigger pot of gravy, you're going to need more flour and more oil. My biscuits were almost done when I remembered that I forgot to put an egg wash on them, which will help them to get brown on top. This step is optional, so if you want to save that egg, you can just omit this step, or you can use a little bit of the evaporated milk and put a little bit of an egg wash on it. I brown my flour until just before I think it's going to start burning, and then I pour in the beef broth. And this is just a little bit of beef bouillon in some water. I'll use this to dip the slices of beef in and also to cover my biscuits and mashed potatoes with. If you don't have beef bouillon, just use whatever you have on hand. The cinnamon roll bites turned out surprisingly good. I thought they could have used some more sugar. I'm sure some brown sugar would have been really good. For the first meal, I'm going to use the sliced beef and make open-faced sandwiches with the biscuits and gravy. I'll just dip each piece into the gravy, and I already had some mashed potatoes in the fridge. I'm sure everybody already knows how to make mashed potatoes. My biggest thing when I make them is to make sure that I salt the water and then cook with thin slices of potato so that it's perfectly seasoned, but you can always add a little extra salt at the end if you need to and some people like their mashed potatoes with milk and butter and you could use just a little bit of the evaporated milk that we have in this haul but save most of it sometimes when i make my mashed potatoes i just mash them up with salt and pepper and that's it and the corn on the cob would have gone nicely with this meal but i decided to save that and so i cooked up one of the large stalks of kale with just a little oil and garlic salt so this is what each plate would look like. Remember, I'm only cooking for myself, but I've measured out the ingredients so that you'll have enough to have four plates exactly like this. Okay, now let's see if this is any good. First, I'll try my biscuit that doesn't have any of the meat on it. And even though I don't like the taste of beef, this gravy is fabulous. And of course, mashed potatoes are always good. The kale is nice also, it has a light garlic flavor and it's nice to have just a little bit of the kale even though it's not very much mentally just having that piece of green on the plate does wonders and i probably could have cooked more but i was just trying to conserve my vegetables throughout the week i'll try a bite of the beef so i can tell you what i think and i'm not a person that enjoys sliced meat so i probably wouldn't opt for that if it was me i'd probably spend the money on another vegetable however i have to say everything underneath that gravy is delicious and the biscuits were also fabulous For my next meal, I'm making hash browns, and I'll save the peelings to fry up later. I've just got those soaking in some water, and I'll grate up one quarter of the onion into the hash browns. That's going to give them some amazing flavor, and then I'll save the rest of that for later. I've always found this to be the tastiest method for making hash browns. It does take a little more time, but I think it's worth it. I season with garlic, salt, and pepper. If I didn't have fresh onion, I would just use a little bit of onion powder. And then I squeeze all of the moisture from the potatoes. If you don't have a cheesecloth, you could always strain these in a strainer using the back of a spoon or a spatula, or you could just skip this step altogether. I found it does help the potatoes to cook better and to cook faster. When I fry my hash browns, I like to get them crispy on one side and not the other. This way, the hash brown still has a lot of body to it, but you get that crispy texture when you bite into it. If you cook your hash browns too long, you can basically just cook them to smithereens and they kind of disappear. This is perfect for me. This is a breakfast for dinner meal, and for this, I'm making an egg biscuit sandwich. I have some hot sauce. And I'm assuming most people will already have hot sauce, but if you don't, this will be tasty without it. Especially if you don't overcook your egg. This is really good, and biscuits are so filling. So I think that this is a good meal. And again, I just served a little bit of the kale on the side. Make sure when you remove the stalks of your kale to save those for later for a soup. 
If you've never tried making hash browns like this, I think you should try it. It's definitely worth the effort. They were so good. For my next meal, I'm making a pasta frittata. I've made this on my channel before, but I usually make the individual serving sizes. This time, I thought I would just make a full pan. And it could be that your family would prefer to eat spaghetti. I know when my sons were younger, they would definitely prefer just to eat the spaghetti. So you could use the tomato sauce for a marinara. And then actually, if you have any leftover spaghetti, then you could always make a frittata with that. But I'm going to go ahead and make the frittata for this episode because I think everybody already knows how to make spaghetti. And I also wanted to show you, I had to put my kale in some water and put it in the fridge because it had started to wilt very badly, but it came back to life with a little bit of water. I cut up some onions and I cooked those. Those are going to give some flavor to the frittata. I'm going to add some garlic salt in here along with some red pepper flakes and I also have some chopped kale. I'll boil my spaghetti in salted water and remove before al dente, so when it's still quite firm. Some people cook their frittata on the top of the stove, but the recipe that I'm loosely following has you brown it on one side and then finish off in the oven for about 10 minutes at 350 degrees. And I actually cooked mine a little longer than that. I like to make sure that the white part of the egg is always well done. And here are the spices that I'm going to add to this marinara. I always add a small amount of water and some vegetable bouillon and this just helps to flavor it and it also helps it to cook easier because I like to simmer it for a long time with all of the spices together until it gets rich and flavorful. I found a smoky paprika dressing recipe that's very highly rated and I thought it would go great on a kale salad. I have the kale, the grated carrots, and I also have one Roma tomato. I cut the recipe in half to try this, but I'll post the original recipe in the description area of my video. Dressing is so easy to make. Really all you need is three ingredients, something sweet, something sour, and some oil. So any vinegar will do, but this called for red wine vinegar and also some honey, and I'm just using a squirt of the honey, and I love smoky paprika. So this sounded like something that would be de really delicious with the kale salad. And it also called for some chopped onions. I'm not doing that. I'm gonna add some onion powder in place of that. And it also called for just a touch of sugar on top of the honey that we're using. And I definitely just suggest, you know, kind of experimenting with what you prefer the sweet level to be. I prefer mine to be a little less sweet, but I do like the idea of the smoky paprika and sweet mixture on that kale. The nice thing about kale is it's such a sturdy green that I could dress the entire salad and put it in the fridge and it would be fine for a few days. When I first made this dressing, I didn't realize I had Dijon in my pantry. So I made it without it. It tasted great. Dijon mustard is just an emulsifier. So um, that's one of the reasons why people like to add that into salad dressings. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. I'm just going to dress a small salad for myself because my son has an Italian dressing in the fridge that he's been liking to eat lately. So he might want to eat the kill later with the Italian dressing. But I am going to make him try this because this is a 10 for me. I'm definitely keeping this recipe 
This is what the frittata looked like when it came out of the oven, and I wanted it to be crispy on top, so I went ahead and flipped it over and pan fried a piece so it would be crispy and chewy on one side. Remember, I had one Roma tomato, so I added four pieces to my salad, and it looks so pretty and vibrant. For the corn, I added some butter and some of the Trader Joe's everything but the elote seasoning, which I love. You can obviously recreate that from your spice cabinet if you don't have it, but it has a smoky flavor. I thought I would do something fancy with the tomato sauce. I served it in a bullet, but then I thought I would try spreading it over the top, so I put it in this little Ziploc bag, and it looked okay, but I'm not sure I would serve it that way again. When I ate it, I actually just like dipping it into the silver bullet of marinara, and it definitely needs marinara to balance it out because it is a heavy, uh, rich flavor. But the marinara was delicious. So like I said, you could use that either with spaghetti or with this. I served it with a large piece of the frittata, I mean, I think obviously if you have younger children in your family of four, you're, they're not going to be able to eat all that, but I just wanted to serve it so you could see what kind of serving sizes you could have for four people. This was delicious. That kale salad is definitely a 10. And if you've never tried making your own marinara before, you are missing out because it's so much better than store-bought. My next meal is biscuits with milk gravy, and the gravy is made the same way as in the beef gravy, except instead of adding beef broth, I'm adding a few tablespoons of the evaporated milk along with some water. I also added salt into the flour in the beginning. If I'm using a bouillon for flavoring, obviously it already has quite a bit of sodium, so I really don't need to add any salt in there, but it is important in making milk gravy. If you taste it and it tastes kind of bland, it's probably because you didn't add enough salt because I think milk gravy is so flavorful and it's one of my favorite types of gravy. And then I'm gonna whisk up about five eggs with a quarter cup of water. If you've never added water into your eggs before, number one, it's probably because you have plenty of money for food. And number two, you've probably never worked in a kitchen because it is quite common to add in either water or milk to make your eggs especially fluffy. And I'm gonna cook mine low and slow and try to get these perfect because scrambled eggs are so much better when you cook them right. My goal when I cook eggs is to make them fluffy and to make sure that I never see brown on the eggs. If I do, it means I was in too big of a hurry and I probably cooked them at too high of a heat. I'm gonna serve mine lightly moist but if I was making these in advance for food prep to have in my fridge just to pull out and microwave for a fast meal later on, I would want to make these a little bit wetter so that they could handle being reheated without it drying them out. Biscuits with milk gravy is one of my favorite meals ever. I could literally eat this every day and be happy. And like I said earlier, biscuits are super filling, which is why I plan to use those in this week's menu. And these might be some of the best eggs I've ever made. They were super fluffy. And also don't forget, if you made all of the biscuits at the beginning of the week, you would have a big bag of biscuits like I do on the side so that you could just pull those out, reheat them for each of these dinners. That way there's less cook time during the week. For my next meal, I'll be making a spam breakfast hash. It's actually called Lunch and Meat for the Walmart Great Value brand, and I'll be using this in two meals. I'll use slices in one meal and then cubes in another. I cooked three potatoes for about three minutes in the microwave first so they would cook faster. I added some onions, and then when it's about halfway done, I added the spam. There's something magical that happens to Spam when you fry it and it gets that nice caramelized coating on it. We can use just this small amount of Spam to flavor our entire dish. I serve this with two biscuits and a fried egg and I don't eat much meat, but I have to say this Spam was ridiculously good. It's so flavorful and chewy and a little salty. It's just, yeah, it just made that hash so delicious. My son tried it and he loved it also. For another meal, I made Spam egg sandwiches on a large biscuit. And originally, 
I was going to make eggs with the hollandaise sauce, but then I decided I probably shouldn't use the extra eggs for the sauce, but let me know if anyone would like the recipe that I was going to try. I served this with a side of ketchup for the hash browns, and I thought this was delicious. I wanted to show you a few of the options that you could make with these ingredients instead of what I made for my menu. These are all things I've made on my channel before. Here I made a veggie pot pie with potatoes and onions and I used gravy as the thickener and just used a basic pastry dough with flour and water. But you could also add chicken to these pot pies and make a chicken pot pie or make one full pie. I also made an empanada once, which my aesthetic wasn't that great, but it did taste good. And I think a curried potato and onion filling would be awesome in an empanada. If you make this menu, make sure that you count your biscuits and potatoes to make sure you have enough for each meal. If you shop sales, you should be able to increase the amount of produce you have. That's it guys. I hope you liked this week's video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Morning has broken, my windows are open. Wanna feel the wind blow through my hair. Which way do I follow?